All right. Imagine that you were walking across the street one day and you were suddenly hit by a truck. When you woke up, you were transported to the Undertale world as a monster. You now have to spend the rest of your life in the underground, or until a human child comes through and frees or murders everyone, whichever comes first. But while you wait for that to happen, you need to find a place to live, and there's quite a few options to choose from. So today, I'll be analyzing every place to live in the underground and listing off the perks and flaws if you choose to live there. There's going to be quite a few things I'll be going into when I analyze each location, like food, population, entertainment, and a lot of other things. Now, I'll do my best to be unbiased in my analysis, and will give my preference at the end. If you want, leave a comment below on where you'd want to live if you were a monster in the underground. And without further ado, let's get going. Alright, first location we've got is the ruins. Now, the ruins are pretty darn spacious, with plenty of areas that could make good potential homes, and although we don't enter any of them, the room where the player finds the toy knife has a backdrop filled with castle-like structures showing that the ruins are extremely massive. The inhabitants of the ruins are pretty diverse as well, with froggets, luxes, sentient rocks, and many more. The ruins are also the home of Toriel, so if you're a big fan of her, the ruins would be a pretty great place to stay. The food is also pretty diverse, with items like monster candy and spider donuts, not to mention the iconic butterscotch and cinnamon pie, or the snail pie if you're into that sort of thing. Although the ruins do have pretty interesting locations and people, there are a few cons with living there. For one, there isn't that much entertainment in the ruins besides maybe the books in Toriel's home or crinkling in leaves. Another negative is how dangerous the place is as a whole. There are quite a large number of spike traps, hidden pits, and bodies of water that could potentially harm its inhabitants. Not to mention, many of the massive pillars spread across the ruins appear cracked and broken, potentially causing an accident. A very prominent negative about the ruins is that unlike every other area in the game, you cannot travel to the other locations due to Toriel locking the gateway, meaning that if you want to leave at any time, you would never be able to come back. Overall, the ruins would be a pretty nice place to live if you're fond of the people, but quite dreary and boring if you're the kind of person who seeks entertainment. Snowden is certainly an interesting choice to make a home, as obviously the entire place is going to be extremely cold, with the entire area covered head to toe in snow. Safety wise, the area does have some danger with the slippery ice alongside the potential fall off the cliffside or an icy cold lake. Although those things do sound pretty bad, there is a force residing in Snowden that acts as its protectors. That force being the Royal Guard's K9 unit. Dogs are used frequently to track people lost or buried under snow, and due to the large number of these guard dogs, the risk of getting into danger is lessened. What this place has that a lot of others don't is a central location where a majority of the community resides, that being Snowden Town. Snowden Town quite possibly has the largest monster population seen in the game. Snowden Town even has a large number of interesting buildings like the inn, shop, grillbies, and library that's spelled wrong. The food options in Snowden are also incredibly diverse, with food like ice cream, bunny-like pastries, and fast food items like burgers. I am not counting papyrus spaghetti as food because it is canonically inedible. Entertainment is very odd within Snowden. Although there are dogs that play poker and several word-related puzzles found in newspapers, the real main source of Snowden's entertainment are sands and papyrus. According to the Snowden shopkeeper, the two brothers just showed up one day, and because of that, the town's gotten a lot more interesting. Overall, Snowden is a pretty cozy and interesting place to live, but if you're someone who dislikes the cold, perhaps another location would be more appealing. Waterfall has plenty of areas for living space, alongside the largest amount of water found within the underground. It's a pretty nice place for those who enjoy rainy weather. There isn't too many dangers found within Waterfall, the only ones really being cliff sides and falling rocks, and even if you were to get into any danger, Waterfall is also the home of the Royal Guard Captain Undyne, so any risk of serious trouble would be quite low with her around, until her house burns down and she leaves. Although Snowden probably has the largest visible population in the underground, Waterfall is a very close second with monsters like the Temis, Shiren, Napsabluk, and a giant onion squid guy, and many more. 
Food-wise, Waterfall has glowing tea, apples in the shape of crabs, and astronaut food. Not to mention actual edible spaghetti thanks to Undyne. Waterfall is no short of entertainment too. There's Thundersnail Racing, which is just extremely slow horse racing. There's Shiren, who you can sing with, a piano, and the Echo Flowers, not to mention a lot more. I know I said I didn't want to be biased, but the part of Waterfall where you can see the castle in the far distance is probably my favorite area in the whole game. It's genuinely really beautiful. Now, although Waterfall has many pros, there's a pretty significant con about living in this area, and that is there are some parts that are way too dark for you to see in. This darkness could cause navigation to be pretty difficult and could cause frustration. This can be seen in-game where many characters are shrouded in darkness. Overall, if you want a place to call home within the underground, Waterfall isn't a bad choice. Hotland, much like the name suggests, is an incredibly warm area of the underground, probably because the entire area sits on top of lava. The lava itself could be potentially dangerous if it wasn't for the royal scientist Alphys, who lives in the Hotlands. There is no chance of anyone falling into the lava as she's created a large number of invisible barriers and floors as a way of protecting its inhabitants. Despite the lava not being too much of an issue, this is still probably the most dangerous place for a monster to live. The massive number of steam platforms across Hotland could potentially cause an accident, alongside the massive amount of lasers that surround the area. Although the area does have two royal guards who keep the peace, there is still the risk of getting eaten alive by a large spider lady who owns a giant cupcake spider monster. Despite all the danger, there are a large and diverse number of people who reside in Hotland like the Vulcans, Pyropes, Sundere, Airplanes, and many more. Hotland is also the most technologically advanced area in the game with all of its elevators and high-tech equipment. There are plenty of locations in Hotland from the core, MDT Resort, Alphys' lab, and the one we don't talk about. Although it's never shown, there is also implied to be a school within Hotland, which is also very interesting. The food within Hotland is very interesting too, with the most variety out of anywhere in the underground, with its dubious hot dogs, spider-related foods, Metaton brand foods, and literal garbage. Speaking of Metaton, Hotland probably has the best entertainment in the underground with Metaton, who has a massive variety of TV shows like cooking ones, news ones, and musicals. If you don't like Metaton related TV shows, however, you can always hang out with the anime obsessed lizard. Overall, Hotland, although very dangerous, is probably the most entertaining location in the underground. The only issue, however, is there's no places shown that can be suitable for residing in, besides MTT Resort and Alphys' lab. If I was a monster living in Hotland, where would I sleep? Not there. New Home is a location in the underground we know the least about. We know that Asgore and a large group of monsters moved from the ruins to get closer to the barrier and establish New Home as the capital of the underground. We also know that New Home holds a massive aquarium that's overpopulated. But besides that, everything else we know can be seen in game. Much like the ruins, New Home has a massive number of buildings that can be seen in the backdrop, which makes looking for a place to reside incredibly easy. The monsters who all live in New Home seem to be more enlightened and sophisticated than others like how Final Froggit, a resident of New Home, is a lot more refined than its ruined counterpart. This could imply that all monsters in New Home become greater over time, like how Pokemon evolve, but that's just speculation. There are some elevators within New Home signifying some technological advancements, but food options are unknown. The only thing that is potentially food related is the golden flower tea, as Gore loves to make. Overall, New Home is an incredibly beautiful and massive place to live, but everything about it is shrouded in mystery and could use some expansion. Alright, that's every location in Undertale analyzed if you were to live in the underground. Now, if I was a monster living in the underground, I would live in the waterfall. Not only am I a rain person, but it's sandwiched right between Hotland and Snowden. Two places I like, making traveling across the three a lot easier depending on where I wanted to go. Now, after all that, leave a comment below telling me where you'd want to live if you're a monster in the underground, and I'll see you all later.